Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to be having a look at how to create animated yet accessible checkboxes using React Spring. Before we dive into the code, let's first bootstrap a new React project. I'll be using Create React App, but feel free to use whatever you want. Now let's open the newly created directory and install the React Spring library. Once we are done, we can run yarn start to start the development server and open the browser. You'll be presented with the ever so popular spinning React logo. Finally, we can dive into the code itself. We'll start by removing the create React app boilerplate and we'll rename the app to checkbox. First, let's have a look at how not to create custom checkboxes or any other custom form elements. Let's import use state from React and use it in order to keep track of the checkbox state. Next, go ahead and create a div element. And once again, I'm repeating that this approach is completely wrong. I'm just going to illustrate my point here. Next. Let's give this div a class name and we'll toggle the checkbox active class based upon the fact if the checkbox is active or not. And finally, let's attach an onClick handler where we'll simply toggle the isChecked state. Now is the time to talk about why this approach of creating custom checkboxes or form elements in general is wrong. Well, there's two reasons for that. The first reason is that it completely breaks the accessibility of the checkbox. What does it mean? Well, it means that users using screen readers for whatever reason will have a hard time interacting with your form because there is no way that a screen reader is going to know that your div is actually a checkbox. The second reason why creating form elements like this is very bad is because it breaks native form behavior. Normally, if you click a checkbox or a radio button, a change event is emitted. These events are very useful, for example, for integrating with various form libraries. And if you use divs instead of native form elements, no such events get emitted. How should we go about fixing these issues? Well, there are at least two approaches that we can take. The first one is using appropriate area attributes on our div elements. With these attributes, it's possible to tell the screen readers that it should treat the div as a checkbox instead. However, we would still need to recreate emitting the events ourselves. And as you can see in this reference implementation, it requires quite a lot of JavaScript. For some form elements, using this approach is inevitable. But I think that for checkboxes, we can find a better approach. Using our approach, we'll first visually hide the native checkbox. And please notice that I put emphasis on the word visually. This means that we'll make sure it still stays in the accessibility tree so that screen readers can actually see it. Then we'll actually use something like a div in order to create the custom checkbox, but we'll hide it from the accessibility tree using the area hidden attribute so that its purpose is only going to be give us visual clues. With that being said, let's delete our original div element. Next, we'll use label as the parent element and we are going to put an input of type checkbox inside of it. We are going to attach an onChange handler onto this checkbox and we'll simply toggle the isChecked state. Then, Let's add a span element, which is going to serve as a visual representation of the checkbox. We'll add a checkbox class name and conditional checkbox active class name to the span element. And we'll also use area hidden true attribute, which is going to hide the span from the accessibility tree. This means that the element is going to be virtually non-existent for users using screen readers, which is what we want. And finally, let's add some text describing the checkbox. Next, we're going to visually hide the native checkbox. 
let's open the respective CSS file, delete the boilerplate code, and paste this snippet of code, which I took from CSS tricks. What it does is that it removes the element from the browser, it removes it visually, but it still keeps it for the screen readers. Please bear in mind that we can't use something like display none, because using display none actually removes the element even for screen readers. If you now open the browser, you can see that the native checkbox element is missing. Let's go back to our CSS file and let's write some additional CSS. First, we'll write some styles for the checkbox class. Because we're using a span element, which is an inline element by default, we need to turn it into an inline block element so that we can set height and width on it. Next, we're gonna give it some background, we're gonna give it a gray border, and we're gonna give it some margin so that there is some space between the text and the actual checkbox. Then we'll create styles for the checkbox active class and we're just gonna set the border color and background color to purple. If you now go back to the browser, you'll see that it's actually working, but I think that it still needs a little bit more work because while it's working perfectly, it's not really visually pleasing. What we're gonna do next is that we're going to go back to our JavaScript file and we're going to replace pad for SVG as we'll be using SVGs in order to create the check mark. We're going to attach the very same class name onto the SVG and we're gonna also use area hidden true attribute. On top of that, we're gonna set view box for the SVG and we're gonna set fill to none so that the SVG doesn't have any background. We are going to paste a path element in the shape of a check mark inside of this SVG and we'll set a stroke width property to two and we'll set the stroke, which is going to correspond to the color of the check mark to white if it's checked and to none if it's not checked. We can now go back to the browser and we're gonna see that it's working, but it's not being animated at all. And we'll tackle this in the next section. So in order to kick off the animation process, we're gonna import animated and use Spring from React Spring. And we're gonna turn the SVG and path elements into animated SVG or animated path respectively. Next, we are going to use the use Spring hook in order to toggle between the background color and between the border color of the SVG. We can now go back to the CSS file and we can remove the checkbox active class as it's not really needed anymore as we handle everything in React Spring. If you view the changes that you made in the browser, you're gonna see that the checkbox is being animated, but it's just the background and border color of the checkbox. We still need to work on the check mark. In order to animate the check mark, I'll be using a very famous technique that uses stroke dash offset and stroke dash array for animating the SVG path. If you're not really familiar with this technique, please go ahead and check out my other video where I cover this topic in depth. Anyways, in order to animate the check mark, we first need to measure its length. So we're gonna use a use state hook in order to keep track of the length and we're gonna pass an inline ref function where we're gonna measure the length of the path. We're gonna store the results of our measurements in the state. Next, we're gonna use another use spring call and we're gonna toggle between zero and check mark for the x variable and we're gonna pass the check mark length to the stroke dash array and we're gonna pass the x variable to stroke dash offset. And once again, if you don't really know what's going on here, please go ahead and check out my other video where I cover this topic in depth. If you go back to the browser, you'll see that the animation is working, but it's not perfect yet. I think that it still deserves a bit more of a final touch. In order to give the animation more of a playful feel, we're gonna use config.gentle. And one last thing before we go back to the browser, we need to animate the background first and then the checkbox when we are animating from the inactive state to active state and vice versa. 
So in order to do that, we're going to make use of the use chain hook. In order to use it, we need to pass the reference through the animations that we need to change. And we're going to use a use spring rev hook in order to do that. And we'll pass the reference through both checkbox animation style and checkmark animation style. As for the use chain hook itself, if the checkbox is checked, we first want to animate the checkbox itself, that means the background color and the border color, and then we want to animate the checkmark, and if it's not checked, then we want to do the opposite. As the second argument to the use chain function, we're going to pass 0 and 0 0.1, which is going to be the delay in seconds. We can now go back to the browser and we'll see that the animation is working perfectly. So thank you very much for watching, I appreciate your time and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.